Hey everyone, my name is Tegan and welcome back to Sandy Writes. Today I'm trying to continue in this little, it's not really a series, but this thing I'm doing where I'm trying to review my favourite books of the year, probably my, my top three of the month. We're going to see how it goes. So this book, I have it right here, is one of my favourites that I've read in February. This is Salt by Hannah Moskowitz. I'll put it this side, there's more space this side. So I've only read one Hannah Moskowitz book before, which is called Teeth, and I love it with my entire heart. There should be a video for it up on this channel. There should be a review on my blog. It's, it's up. I love that book more than anything. And I think after reading these two books, I think I'm kind of recognising like, these key, maybe, features of Moskowitz's writing, which is pretty much predominantly very messy characters and a lot of bitter humour. And in the two that I've read specifically, it's... Um, there's more of a side of like siblings and a family dynamic and also sea monsters. I love monster books above anything else, especially as I'm going through um, I'm still going through my lighthouse core phase, so sea monsters are up there for me. But sibling books and like big special family books are like a close second to that. I also wanted to say, I read the reviews of him, <laughs> but well, as I was writing my own, and there's so many negative reviews, and the thing is, I understand the reasons for every single one of them, and I've picked up on the same negative reasons. I'm just very easily overshadowed by the good things that I love. And because it was the same for Teeth as well, so Salt and Teeth both appeal to so many of my niche interests all in one book that I love it so much and I can't focus on anything else. So this is a very biased review based off, well, it, it's a book for me. So, a summary. Siblings Indy, Belize, Oscar and Zulu, I think I got that right, they are roaming the Mediterranean, the Mediterranean the Mediterranean on their boat and they're killing sea monsters and trying to hunt down the one that is rumoured to have killed their parents who have not returned from a hunt. Indy is a second older sibling, he's 16 or 17 I think and he yearns for a calmer life and he hopes that the treasure hinted at in their lost parents' journal will provide a means for his family to escape from this very dangerous life before it's too late. Um, most of the story focuses on the development of the characters and this sibling relationship is my favourite part. A bulk of this review is about the characters. <laughs> so Moskovitz really captures this like messy family dynamic where the oldest two siblings are kind of forced to act as parents for the younger two. So there's constant fighting and bickering like between the roles as parents and siblings. But it still manages to show the good times and like, this deep love they have for each other and there's a lot of scenes of just focusing on the good things amongst so much bad. So it's a very beautiful and almost refreshing compared to a lot of family dynamics we see in YA. It's an unconventional family with an unconventional life. And as I said before, sibling relationships have a very special place in my heart. And all of these siblings actually feel like real developed distinct people which is kind of impressive because I think a lot of siblings if they're not the writer get overlooked but there's four of them and they all feel different so a quick breakdown of them so Belisa is the oldest she is the one who's driven to find and kill the monster that supposedly killed their parents and she's willing to do just about anything it seems to find that monster She's also the only sibling who lived a normal life, not on a boat, not hunting monsters. She was the one who was still born on land before the parents took up the monster hunting business. Also, I've seen a lot of reviews compare this to like an ocean version of Supernatural, like almost every single review. And I've never seen Supernatural, so I, c I can't judge. I would assume so. So Indy is the second oldest sibling. He's probably my favorite, mostly because he's narrator and we spend most time in his head. He's the caretaker for the siblings of Doctor the Ship, who patches everyone up after fights. He also seems to be the one who's more responsible for the schooling and the education of the younger two siblings. So he's the one who's mostly raising the younger two, and he's constantly worrying about what their lives will become if Belisa keeps pushing them too hard. And he hates the lifestyle of killing monsters, but he's too codependent on his siblings to step away from it. Oscar is maybe about 12, I think? And he is great at stealing pretty much anything he wants or thinks the family will need. 
he has like a bitchy teenage boy attitude <laughs> but most of it does come across as a tough facade and he, he, he is quite adorable. Zulu is the youngest and she's a very rare instance from what I've personally read in YA of a younger child character. I think she's six. She's six. Um, yeah, she's a rare instance of a young character who's actually written as their age because I think YA or books in general tend to see these young characters and infantilize or baby them a lot more than they are. So she's a great example of a character who actually acts her age but still manages to show her youth. She's been trained from birth to fight alongside her siblings and she's the one who butchers the monster meat after they've been killed. She's very hyper and adorable and uh, annoying but she is the perfect younger sibling. So one of the big themes or the biggest theme in this book is about the family that I just mentioned, specifically the concept of home and identity within a family. For the siblings they live on an ocean and th th at least three of them were born on the boat and also don't have like, any birth certificates or records that they exist. So they don't have a typical home. Their home is also their business. They are monster hunters. But it only seems to be Indy. It might just be because he is the narrator so he's the one we hear from. But he's the one who spends most of their time wondering if there's a home or a country that he truly belongs. And he's trying to figure out if he and his siblings belong to the same like social groups as their parents did. But in reality they belong to no place, like only to each other and that's a very special bond. So I adore the setting of this book, like the boat in particular. Because I've been on a sea monster, pirate, lighthouse call, whatever you want to call it, binge recently. And this book is probably one of the first ones set on a boat that truly encapsulates the less glamorous parts of living on a ship. The ship is dilapidated and very rickety and half the equipment doesn't work. And there's no privacy and there's nowhere to escape when you're mad at someone, which happens a lot when you are four teenage-ish siblings living and working together 24-7 and you're wet and salty and there's very little you can do when you're injured and away from shore for weeks or months at a time and there is a few chapters in this book where one of them is injured and is just suffering until they can get help or until there's anything they can do about it. So I love the focus on these less than perfect details and it added a lot of realism to the story and the setting for me especially as a vast majority of the plot does take place on the ship. So the one thing that was missing from this book for me, which is the one thing that a lot of people picked up on and gave it very negative reviews for, is that it's, um, yeah, the one thing missing for me was more depth and development. Because like, it's a tiny little baby book, it's probably not even 300 pages long, let's have a quickie look. Where are the page numbers? Yeah, it's about 250 pages long, it's a little baby book. And it opens in the middle of a sea monster fight and the world expands and the backstory is revealed a bit as the tr kids travel around. But as the book is so short, there's no time to really go into the detail that I would personally want. There's very few descriptions of the monsters that they're fighting and the world itself. And they are travelling a lot, they're going to so many exciting countries and they all feel the same as they're so um, underdeveloped. So this book did make me rely very heavily on my imagination as I was reading it. There's also sometimes a chapter worth of build up to the specific important scenes but then we never get to see the scene as it's skipped over, it happens off page so we only get a little recap of what happened. This should technically make me give it a lower star rating as it did for many other people but this book was overshadowed by how much I love the characters and the concept and how many of my niche interests it hit because I'm very easily pleased. In summary I loved so many parts of this book and the characters stole my heart. It's very fast paced and it's a very personal narrative about finding your place in the world even though you never really belong to it. So yeah, I think that's what I've got to say about this book. I love it a lot. I also think it's very pretty. We're going to have a little quick book tour. 
So I didn't notice this when I saw the book on the website, but these are monster tentacles and I do like how it is silhouetted against that because this is also salt, it could also be stars in the sky. Here's a little look at the back. So yeah, I, I love this little silhouette thing so much. And it's a hardback, so we have this salty theme carried on on the inside. Uh, let's put it back together. <laughs> and you can kind of see there are a lot of black pages in here. The chapter's also very short, and they're broken up by these like salty themed pages. So I love this book, I love it physically, and that's what I have to say on it. So thank you for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you next time. Bye!